We're on a mission from God. That is just one of the many quotable lines from one of my favorite movies of all time, co-written and directed by my friend, mentor, and fellow trailers from hell guru, John Landis. When I was growing up in Chicago, the filming of this film was one of the biggest events to hit the town since the 1968 riots, but a hell of a lot funnier. It has some of the biggest action sequences ever filmed, some of the greatest musical numbers ever filmed, and is one of the funniest comedies ever made. I'm talking about the Blues Brothers. You'd better get bright, pal. We got a show to do. Then we got to figure out some way to collect that gate money. Get it to the Cook County Assessor's Office as soon as they open in the morning. John Belushi had started in uh, Second City in Chicago, and Dan Aykroyd was doing Second City in Toronto. And eventually, John Belushi went to Toronto to do Second City with Belushi there. And they created the Blues Brothers just as sort of a fun thing to do. It became a warm-up act during Saturday Night Live tapings. It was never intended to be on the show. Carrie Fisher was hosting Saturday Night Live, and she said she wanted the Blues Brothers to be on the episode, which went over very well. So Universal took a look around and said, wait a minute, we should make this into a movie. So they asked John Landis, do you think you could make this into a movie and have it in theaters? by August. This was eight months prior to the release date. And Landis said, sure. But there was no script yet. Uh, Dan Aykroyd had been working on the script, but supposedly it was hundreds of pages long, and though there was amazing stuff in it, it was unshootable. So Dan Aykroyd handed it to Landis and said, you do it, you fix it. So Landis did a pass on the script, made it into a, a shootable script. So when I was growing up in Chicago, the shooting of the Blues Brothers was a, an enormous, enormous deal. Mayor Daley had not allowed filming in Chicago for 20 years. He did this, filming was locked out of Chicago. And Mayor Jane Byrne allowed filming to resume in Chicago, and the Blues Brothers was the first big production to hit Chicago. It was huge, and everything that you see in the movie was real. All the car crashes were real. All the action was real. All the explosions were real. There was, there was no digital technology. There were scenes where 35 cars were traveling at 110 miles an hour in the middle of downtown Chicago, they had to have hundreds of PAs close off every street and every access road to the city to get these sequences to be pulled off. There's that fantastic scene where they have a car chase through the mall, where everything in the mall gets destroyed. They found a mall that was abandoned and they filled all the stores with products and signage and stuff like that, but they had to fly in hundreds and hundreds of stunt people to play the pedestrians. Every pedestrian in that sequence is a stunt person flown into Chicago from LA. Then they had three days to shoot that sequence, which is amazing when you look at it. I mean, the, the, the scope of that scene is incredible. John Landis plays one of the cop cars in one of the two pursuing police cars in that sequence, and he actually is driving the car for the car flip in the middle of the mall. And Stephen Bishop, the singer, is the cop next to him. He's the, the, the cop who says, they broke my watch. John Landis' wardrobe designer, Deborah Nadulman, who also happens to be John's wife, uh, was doing the wardrobe design for the film, as she does with all of his films, and she wanted to create a uniform for the characters. And she said that if, if you want the characters of the Blues Brothers to be iconic and withstand the test of time, she has to create a look for the characters that is recognizable in silhouette. And she cited Charlie Chaplin and Laurel and Hardy and the Marx Brothers and Mickey Mouse and all these iconic characters that have withstood the test of time. She, of course, then later went on to do the same thing with Indiana Jones. And even in later movies, in, in the Indiana Jones saga, they introduced the character in, in the movie in silhouette. So she wanted to have Ray-Ban sunglasses for John and, and Danny. Wayfarer Ray-Ban sunglasses, which they did not make anymore. So they sent people out to all these old department stores around the country that still had the old displays from years prior, and they found about 60 pairs. Everybody in the Blues Brothers band had to wear them, and all the stunt people had to wear them, and even though they had 60, they kept disappearing. And John Belushi kept giving them away. Every time he'd flirt with a girl, he'd give her his sunglasses. So they were getting very nervous that they were losing their stash of sunglasses. Around the same time that they were shooting, Paul Brickman was in Chicago scouting for a movie called Risky Business. And he said he thought, hey, these glasses are pretty cool. So at the end of the Blues Brothers, Paul Brickman bought the last remaining 12 pairs of Wayfarers for uh, Risky Business. And of course, you look at the movie poster for Risky Business, the whole movie poster is Tom Cruise's eyes with Wayfarer Ray-Bans down his nose. Mm -hmm.